If we're gonna make it go, we have to make it stop. Welcome to Hacker Week. Last time we left off with the electrical. I ordered a few parts like that headlight pigtail. I got some signal lights for the front coming that have dual filaments in the bulbs. We'll get those on at a later time, but today we're gonna to tackle the brakes in the chain. Like I said, we're gonna make it go and stop. Now, way back in an earlier episode, I did the rear wheel. The brake shoes are in there. They're on the brake shoe holder. We need to put uh, the lever on that actuates the brakes. We're gonna put the rod between here and the forward part of the swinging arm that keeps this whole brake shoe holder from rotating. And uh, what else? We're gonna put the, the brake uh, pedal on so that we can stop the thing and the rod that comes back and actuates the arm. So we're gonna get started with that right now. Like I've done before, I printed out some of the uh, breakdown of the parts from what they used to call the microfish. It was basically film that you looked at or it was in a book. But anyway, it's the, uh, the parts breakdown. I get all mine from uh, House of Honda and these are super handy. I mean, they're like a visual, uh, you know, breakdown of everything on the bike. Um, this is for the final, or for the uh, sprocket. Um, this is for the cover that goes on the sprocket. And over here, is the one for the brakes shows me all the hardware and for instance like this bolt right here what is this thing number 16 i can uh, flip over here and look it up number 16 hex bolt and it tells me what size it is six by 20 millimeters long so six millimeter bolt 20 millimeters long with a nut and all that i got a whole bunch of these i got stacks of them that i've been printing out as i've been putting this bike together um here they are i mean it's a bunch. It's all kinds of drawings on every single thing. And with them are all of the specced out bolts, parts, whatever. So super handy. It's kind of like an owner's manual in visual form. So it's a good tip. I would suggest that when you're working on stuff, you don't know what goes where, that you uh, print some of those out and uh, it'll help you out a bunch. So let's get back to it here. Um, this is the swinging arm. And um, what do they call that thing? Um, let's see, it's number five. I stapled this together upside down. Uh, number five, they just call it the arm. <laughs> okay, close enough. Anyway, we've got to put that on. We've got to put on uh, some stuff for the brakes. And I've got it all laid out here. Here's the arm. Here's all of the bolts and the cotter pin and everything. All of that specked out off from everything I saw on here. That's how I figured out where all those bolts were. See, I've got all these buckets and parts of bolts. And um, every time I do an episode and put stuff on, it's getting down to less and less. It started out with a whole lot of stuff and this is pretty much all that's left right here. Um, here's some more stuff here that are gonna go on to the brake assembly. Those bolts don't. So anyway, Let's get putting it all on. First thing I've got to do is loosen my rear axle because I need to be able to move around that, that brake holder assembly. And I can't do that when the axle is tight. So here we go. Now we'll go to the other side and I should be able to move this around freely now. Yeah, okay. So here's the arm. It's actually got a little bit of a bend to it. Um, on one end it's offset a little bit from the other. And the reason for that is it goes from here up to the swinging arm and there's a little bit of offset. So if you just take a look at it, and use some common sense, you'll be able to figure out that yes indeed it does go like that. So the longer bolt I've got here, this is the one that goes in the back. This one right here. So let's see, we're gonna take all the hardware off it. We'll push that through here. And it's got some little flats on it that locate it and lock it into place. We're gonna put the arm on, and then we're gonna put one washer on, and we're gonna put a lock washer and a bolt up. And then we'll put the nut on. 
Yeah, the zinc plating on some of these bolts is a bit heavy, so can't really turn some of them by hand. I need to get on them with a... Okay. It seems a little weird to me that that's tightened down and it's like that. It, you know, I don't think that's right. I think that that washer is actually supposed to be one that goes over that collar there. I gotta look that up. Let's see. There's the washer in question right there, number 24. Let's see what that is, number 24. Ah, it is, it's a 10 millimeter washer. I had an eight millimeter washer on there. So I need a 10 millimeter washer. Let's see, there's a 10. Now, if I put that on there, that should slide over the other part. Okay, that makes more sense. All right, let's try this again. The arm on, 10 millimeter washer. Yeah, that looks a little better. And this is a plain eight millimeter, is what it called for. And then we'll go ahead and put the nut on. This has a cotter pin in it too. Now that lines up a little better. That looks, that looks more like it. Okay, we're just gonna leave that snug for now. Now we get the front bolt. It's a similar kind of bolt. It's a shoulder bolt. And we're going to swing that arm up into place. It's going to go right in here in uh, this location. And we're just going to move that until that hole lines up right. Okay. Still not quite all the way through. There we go. And now we're gonna put the washers on. And it's the same setup up here. It's a 10 millimeter washer. Then it gets an eight millimeter plain washer. And then it gets an eight millimeter nut. Now we can tighten all that stuff down and put the cotter pin in it. The hole for the cotter pin runs front to back. It's a 14 millimeter on the other side to hold this in place. And I'm gonna go ahead and tighten it up. And now it should be, should be free floating there, which I believe it is. Okay. All right, that's tight. Let's put a cotter pin in. And then we'll bend it. Like so. Now we're gonna do the same thing to the back. Let's get the rear bolt tightened up. Get a cotter pin in there. Bend the little tabs. And that's that. This is the front brake lever. I've got it greased up already and the spring goes on like this. And I can see right now, I probably should have put this on here a long time ago. It's gonna be a real pain in the arse to get on there, but I don't know, here goes. I'm just gonna take the spring loose first and see if I can push the thing into position, at least close. The spring bumps against the frame and then it has to go in behind there. Yeah, it looks like I can probably do it. Yep, it's really close. Uh, there it went. Okay. But it still has to pull out this way. Okay, brake pedal installation. Let's get that on there. It's being real stubborn, and I know it's because of all of the uh, zinc plating that's on that shaft. I'm going to leave it 
it like that for now. I'll deal with that later. Now we put the brake arm on and we're going to put some parts on that I ordered way back when. This is a little felt seal that goes in there, kind of a dust seal. This little uh, dust cover, take a close look at that. See that notch at the top where there's no teeth? That has to point up. See that little dot right there? Well, there's also a dot on this shaft that that should line up with. It's a little bit tricky to see here in my light, but looks like I got it pretty close there. I'm gonna get this bolt out before I can go any further. Yeah, there we go, that's lined up. Put the bolt back in. That's tight. Now we can put the brake rod on. Okay, brake rod. First we put this in, this round slug of metal with a hole in it. And we'll push the brake rod through that. And then we'll put the adjuster nut on. We'll turn that in till it's probably just just starting to show the threads on the other side. Close enough, right there. Now we will attach the front. I don't know how much of this you're going to be able to actually see, but I'm going to let you witness the uh, the torture that is going to be me trying to get this thing on there. Man, I should have so should have done this a long time ago, like before the engine even went in. Wow. I got Seamus. You can't see him. He's off camera here. He's kind of cruising around. Rubbing against my leg, giving me some moral support, I guess. He's my buddy. So what I'm doing is I've got the the pin is pushed through the hole in the rod. And I'm sort of just wiggling it around, trying to find the hole in the... Oh, oh, I think I got it. Got it part way anyway. Holy shit, what a pain in the ass. Wow. Well, there it is. I gotta get the cotter pin in now, though. Okay, let's see. Pretty much gotta reach in through this little tiny opening. I can't see shit. <laughs> I love a good challenge. And this is certainly a challenge. Holy crap, I got it. Wow. Crazy. Finally got this thing on all the way. I had to clean up the splines a little bit on the actual brake pedal. Now there's a 20 millimeter long bolt, 20 by six, it goes in here. And it serves as the uh, stop for the brake pedal so it doesn't bang into the uh, foot peg. So I'm gonna leave that alone for now, put it right about there. There's a spring here that has to go on to the brake light switch. Um, this is a little bent. I'm going to tweak it back a little bit. That hooks on here on the brake light switch and then down here on the brake pedal so that when you pull on it, it activates the brake light switch. 
So that um, just about wraps up the brakes. I could do a little adjustment right now and uh, that would be done back there. So here's the throw I have right now. It's not bad. It's maybe, uh, I don't know, an inch and a half up at the pedal, but I could, you know, get a little, little less than that. So what I could do is just pull on the brake arm back here and then turn the adjuster nut a few turns. And now I'm down to about maybe three quarters of an inch of travel, something like that. Okay, there we go. One more little tidbit on the rear brake. See that little arrow right there? And there's a little mark right there. That's like a wear indicator. See, it barely moves right now, but when it gets to where that arrow is lining up with that little mark, it's time to change the brake pads. Now we can get the chain on. Let's get the sprocket on first. Got a 17 tooth sprocket here. Let's get it lined up on the splines. And now here's the lock plate that goes on. And that will go on like this and then it goes into a groove and it'll rotate until it lines up with the holes. I'm gonna put a little bit of red Loctite on these just for because. I'm going to run them in first with the uh, impact just because it's speedier. And now I'm going to put the bike in first gear and uh, tighten these up to 10 foot pounds. That should be sufficient for a 6 millimeter bolt. Put it back in neutral and we'll drop it back into first. Get that one. All right, sprocket is installed. Now we get to put this goofy chain oiler mechanism thing in, and this one's missing the. Uh, well, it's got a little bit of the rubber squishy thing that's supposed to go in there. That's what's supposed to meter your oil that drips out onto the chain. Uh, from the crankcase that little screw right there is the adjustment for metering So I'm gonna put this in and pretty much just bottom it out and close it off um, I'm not really after having it do anything for me other than Not sling oil everywhere. I can take care of the uh, oiling myself. I couldn't come up with a torque spec for that that uh, big nut flange thing there for the oiler so I'm just going to take it up to eh, 15 to 20 foot pounds. I reckon that's good enough. Now there's a lock tab on there. Bend over the lock tabs. There we go. Now this is that oiler adjustment I was talking about. And I'm just going to crank it in tight and leave it. I've got an O-ring style chain to put on here. The reason they call it that is because it comes with little O-rings. There's four of them there that go on that last link. And then this style chain doesn't have a master link. It has that link. And then you need to use a chain rivet tool. Picked up one of these um, a couple of years ago when I was doing a job. All the instructions are in here when you get one of these. They're not too difficult to use. And uh, well, now you're gonna find out just how to use one. So obviously, first thing we need to do is get the chain on here. These things are really stiff right out of the box. So you just get the chain started on the rear wheel, basically spin it around, and we'll bring it toward the front. Really greasy. Get it on the front sprocket. Bike's in neutral. I'm gonna rotate it right on around. Keep going until it comes out the bottom here. Now it's going to come back here and let's see where we're at. I could almost get it together. I've got to bring the wheel forward a bit. So to do that, I'll just back off my adjusters a little bit.
take them back where I can slide the wheel all the way forward. And now, should be able to just barely get the link in there. So we're going to put an O-ring on each one of these. We're going to push it through that part and then pull it up here and get it through that part. Now we'll put the O-rings on the outside. Oops, that one wants to fall off. Stay, damn ya. And uh, then what's going to go on is this part. But what we got to do now is get out the uh, the rivet tool. This is the rivet tool, and it's got a hollow end here, and it's got this shaft that's hollow. Inside there right now is the riveter. Let me run this screw all the way up. See that little nipple right there? What this does is it flares out the pin on the end. The end of the pin has a little uh, dimple in it already, and it flares it out and locks it in place on the chain. Now I need to put this little arbor in at this end. That prevents the pin from coming out. If I was using this as a brake tool to break apart a chain, I would put the proper size pin in here for the chain, leave this open, and then I could just push the pin straight through to remove a chain. But right now we're installing a chain, so I put the arbor in place. And the first thing I'm going to do is just tighten it up to squish that link all the way down and make sure that it's in far enough that we can actually rivet the link together. So I'm going to do that to both of these first. Okay, let's remove it and we'll see what we did here. Let's take a look at this. You can see right there they're sitting proud of the actual link and that's what we want now I can put the rivet tool back on and it will go into that little dimple right there and there on the end of that pin and it'll it'll kind of flare it out and then hold that link in place and then the chain is all connected together and ready to go okay so here we go let's go ahead and run this on and then we'll tighten this up it just bottoms out. Now I'm going to hold on to this with the crescent wrench and then I'm going to use the uh, ratchet to tighten it up and, and actually do the riveting. It comes with a, a little rod you can run through there but it's kind of small and hard to get some torque on. It's pretty hard on your hands too. It's a tiny little thing. That's probably good enough. Let's back it off and we'll take a look at it. Yeah, that's, that's flared okay, but I'd like to see it just a little bit more. So, I'm going to run it on there one more time. And run it in again. And that's probably going to do it right there. Yeah, that looks good. Now I'll do the other one. good let's take a closer look there they are flared all out I put a piece of white paper behind it so that you can actually see that they are flared just a tiny bit doesn't take much so that should be good to go okay now all that's left is to do an initial tensioning of the chain I'm just gonna pull it back by hand Gonna look at it by eyeball, things look pretty good. Get this adjuster nut up. Now there's marks right here, and I'm just a little past the first mark on that side. So I'll come over to the other side here and get it adjusted where it's about the same. 
And then what you can do is you can look at the sprocket at the back here and eyeball forward. You should see a nice straight line. If you see it come back here and the sprocket's looking a little crooked, that means that you've got too much tension on this side, not enough on the other. And then the next thing is to look at this, how much slack there is in the chain. Now right now, the swinging arm is all the way down. As it goes into compression, it's gonna tighten up a tiny bit, not very much. Um, you don't really have to worry too much about that. Dirt bikes, you gotta kinda watch out for some of that, but then they have tensioners on them and idlers and all that jazz. But anyway, that's um, it's probably not a bad place to start. Nice straight line, that looks good. I'm gonna lock down my adjusters. Got a long ways to go here, so looks like I'm adjusted about right as far as the uh, number of links in the chain. Snug this up. Chain tension looks good. That's good and tight. We'll get a cotter pin in there. Lock down the adjusters all the way. And that's a wrap. All right, I've got a chain and I got brakes. Good deal. We got a drivetrain now. Got a running engine and a drivetrain and brakes and some electrical. So cool, I should be able to take this thing for a test drive pretty soon around the uh, cul-de-sac up front. Got to get the seat together first, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself there. The next video is going to be sinking the carburetors. That should be fun and we'll get the air box put on while we're at it and then we'll move on from there. But for now, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for all the donations. They really help out. And until next time. I think next up is going to be sinking the carburetors. So that'll probably be the next video. <clears throat>